Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This video is actually really cool. We're going to be taking a look at an application called Motion Assistant. This application was written for GPD's latest devices, their GPD Win 4 and the GPD Win Max 2. Largely how it works is it's leveraging concepts and techniques that I have talked about going back to even the IA Neo 1 when we take a look at the AMD Renoir platform, and that's all with GPU clock modulation. If you were to recall my 6800U versus Steam Deck video, my Fox tweaks, is basically how this application works. And we'll talk about the concepts of where you would actually use this in a better sense to get the most out of the application. That's what we're gonna do first in this video is how to use this application and where you would use it. You will not be using this for emulation. You will instead be using this for native PC games and it really favors running them at 40 Hertz or 40 FPS. This is where this tool shines as a set it and forget it type of utility. The second part of this video is going to be going over why it works, and we'll also take a look at the performance differences with the tool on or off, and show that it's really just having our cake and eating it too. So first up, how to use Motion Assistant. All right, so this particular part of the video is gonna show you how to actually use this particular application. This is Motion Assistant 1155. The link will be in the description field below for you to download. Largely what this comes down to is just CPU and GPU modulation. What we're doing is overriding what the CPU and GPU would do normally and getting a better situation. And I'll kind of quickly explain what that is. And then after this part, we're going to go into a deeper dive and you look at graphs and stuff and show why things are happening as they are. So what is going on here? The biggest part of this is optimized GPU 6800U and this float option. That is the magic sauce of this particular application. One thing I do want to talk about here is that this does benefit 40 hertz more than it does 60 hertz. 40 hertz doesn't need as much CPU or GPU. So by having a 40 hertz cap and hitting 40 FPS, what you're going to be doing here is you're going to have a lower baseline, thus needing less resources to actually hit this goal. If you go up to 60, you're not going to see the same amount of power savings as you would at 40. So just be mindful of that. It's not it's not going to give you everything for free. We do have to make some considerations here, but 40 hertz is a nice balance between 30 and 60. It is exactly half in terms of frame time. So now that we got a kind of an understanding of what fundamentally is happening here, let's take a look at CPU first. So you're going to go ahead and limit auto limit TDP. You can say 28 watt is here. Auto limit TDP really isn't the magic sauce here. That is just to always make sure that it's at 28 watt, making sure that it's always sticking there, not that it, the TDP is gonna be fluctuating at all. If we take a look at CPU boost right over here, right now, turbo boost is enabled. So if I go ahead and run CPU bench, if I go here, so right here you can see my CPUs are going to up around 3.7 gigahertz. When it goes to single core, you're gonna see all these relax and you can see 3.7 gigahertz right there. The reason for that, Remember in my Win4 review video that my optimization guide, I told you to put the CPU limit to 3.7 gigahertz. That's why you're seeing that 3.7 gigahertz limit right there. Not that that is the high end for it. It's just that that's where I limited it. It would technically go up to 4.7 gigahertz on single core, but we'd be using a tremendous amount of power around 18 watts just for single core. So keep that in mind that the only reason that you want that very high frequency is for only a certain set of applications, particularly emulation. These settings are not great for emulation. These are really more for native PC games that we're running at 40 hertz, okay? This is where it's going to shine. Now, if we go back over here and I go ahead and disable Turbo Boost, right? And I go to Bench CPU and right there, 2.7 gigahertz. That is the base clock of AMD 6800U. Technically, what's really happening here is we have a CPU limit of 2.7 gigahertz. So it's not like this is anything drastic. You can actually do this in Sife's tool. You can make the CPU cap even lower in Sife's tool if you really wanted to really kind of strangle what's going on and what the CPU is doing. But we're not touching TDP here at all. TDP has a ceiling of 28 watt power budget, but because we are kind of modulating what how much CPU we can use, we're actually never going to be able to use that much power because we're putting in a frequency limit. Now here is the ultimate sauce. Optimize GPU 6800U and float. What this does, now if we take a look at this one demonstration here, which with I have uh, Forza Horizon 5, this is 1080p with low settings. It is a 40 hertz cap. Now, for the, throughout the entire video here, you're going to see that it's sticking to that 40 hertz cap pretty much no problem. 
But if we take a look at the GPU clock, what you should notice, what you should notice is that the GPU is redlining to its maximum frequency, which is 2.2 gigahertz, and then goes down to 400 megahertz, and then snaps back up to 2.2 gigahertz. Potentially what's happening here is that it's running at its max frequency and then micro sleeping for a bit. And that's just reporting the 400 megahertz is just reporting the lowest amount just because it's all it can report. And then it snaps back up to 2.2 gigahertz. The end result here is that we are using more power than is absolutely necessary in this particular instance. So instead, if we go ahead and enable float GPU, what this is going to do is statically override the GPU clock in real time based on GPU usage. So if we run this Forza Horizon 5 benchmark again, same exact settings, you're going to notice that the GPU clock starts off a little high and slowly ratchets down until it figures out how much GPU clock you actually need to run the game to hit that FPS cap that you've set. And then what you're going to see is that the total amount of power between the two is a giant difference. Now the end result here is that we have used tremendously less power, but have the same performance. So this is really the secret sauce here. To wrap this up, this is kind of set it and forget it. In one particular small case, if we are looking at 2D based games, disable CPU boost, we'll make sure that 2D games don't use up to, uh, too much CPU when they don't need to because we'll have a 2.7 gigahertz CPU ceiling. With GPU float, any game that is using GPU won't be getting that erratic behavior of 2.2 gigahertz down to 400 megahertz. Uh, you're not going to be seeing that. Instead, what the system is going to be doing is statically clocking the GPU and checking GPU usage and auto-modifying that in real time. And now we're going to go into the graphs and show you why that matters and how that benefits us. All right, so now that we know how to use the application, let's start going into the numbers of why this is working. So up first, as you were seeing, we were looking at Forza Horizon 5. It was 1080p. We're running at 40 hertz, 40 FPS, and the low preset. If you were to just take a look at the yellow and green part of this graph, that is the GPU default clocks. This is what AMD will normally run the clocks at. If you have a default TDP, say 24 or 25 watt, this is what the clocks will run at. The yellow is the actual clock that is being reported by Hardware Info. The green clock is the effective default clock. So you can see those are up above. If we take a look at the blue and red clocks, the red clock is the auto TDP setting, the auto GPU clock setting. The GPU clock that is set is one gigahertz, but the effective clock, if we take a look at that, you can see it's effectively far below one gigahertz on that GPU clock. The thing that is really compelling here is looking at the green line and the blue line, and you can see the differences in clocks that the game is trying to do green being default and blue being what Motion Assistant is creating. So now what is going on with regard to GPU utilization? The blue line represents the default clock and you can see that as a utilization rate, we are at like 80% and then it goes under 75%, but it's really in a 75% utilization zone. Whereas with the Motion Assistant where it's clocking the GPU, you can see that we're pretty much at 90% utilization quite often up until it has that dip that's in the same part as the blue, but then it goes right back to being 90% utilized. So it's effectively doing a better job of utilizing the GPU at specific clocks. What that means is, and really this is the secret sauce because we are lowering clocks, instead of using around 0.85 volts, for the GPU. Instead, we're using 0.715 volts across the entire run. And this is where all of the power differences come in. Ultimately, this comes to the conclusion of how much total power is saved. And there's a lot to unpack in this one particular graph because there's a lot going on here. This is total watts used. So the entire device, the entire wind force. So that includes the display, RAM, storage, Wi-Fi, the whole bit. The blue line represents total watts used with the default clocks, and the red line indicates total watts used with the auto clocks that are determined by Motion Assistant. And when we average out this total power, if we were to get battery life out of this, if you were just to have a full battery on the GPD Win 4, which is 47 watt hour battery, you would have 95 minutes of battery life. But if you use Motion Assistant, you would have 119 minutes of battery life. So effectively, we're getting 24 extra minutes of battery life and performance hasn't changed. In fact, if we look at performance, 
If we take a look at the performance differences here between the average FPS, one percentile, and five percentile, average is the same, but even one percentile and five percentile, we're looking at something that is like half a percent difference, so marginal at best. So we are effectively having our cake and eating it too. We are having the same performance, yet getting almost 25 to 30 minutes of extra battery life. And this can actually go further if we were to leverage CPU clocks a little bit better as well. Now, there is some good news on the horizon. We're looking at potentially another tool that will do everything. So it'll be a set it and forget it tool, hopefully for emulation in any particular application. So look forward to that. There's some news coming there, hopefully soon. Uh, that's it for me, guys. Motion Assistant is legit. You guys should download it now and be able to enjoy it. This will only work, obviously, for native PC games. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.